recording to the even with my comfortable clothes on recording for the future um by request the lower back love let's come and sit together not already there maybe you've done a little bit of warming up while we were talking which is such a nice thing to do you're on your mat why not um take care of yourself that's what we're here for this is a place to build our awareness and to create some stillness. Yoga Sutta Bhutti Nirodha. Yoga is the settling of the waves of the mind into stillness. Stilling the body first, create peace in your body. Let your awareness rest into it with the sensations of it. Try not to judge anything, just notice. Take care of yourself throughout and do things to take care of your body, your heart. Breathe out, feel that exhale settle down into your belly. Let's do three breaths. Gently lifting your sternum and rolling your shoulders a little down your back. Soft gaze or closed eyes, soft, everything. Inhale. Slow and stretched out, a little sound through your nose. Exhale down into your belly center. Slow breathing, a little bit at a time. Take your time, one more. Slowly exhale, gently toning in the low belly. Find that gentle inward energy with the exhales and keep it. Next time you breathe in, just lightly down low. Eyes open, intention. Coming together, sound and vibration. Oh. Please come to your back and bring your knees to your chest, rocking side to side gently. A moment to come down carefully with your chin tucked. Really customize this. You can adjust where your knees are in space. It's kind of nice to bring the knees away and back in a few times. Feel how the spine connects here, how the low back is drawing up off the ground a little bit. You bring your knees way in. One more time, knees in, rock side to side. and relax in the center. Slide your arms behind your knees and catch your opposite wrist or hand and then fold your knees back. And so it holds you in this little happy baby variation and let your right ear come over towards the floor a little more, Stroll your head to the right. Now breathe, come into this shape in the body, still settling awareness into the moment. Feel the earth, be where you are. And ease your head to center, over to the other side. Just a little lying down head twist. Everything relaxed. Roll your head back to center. Really try to find what center is, center of skull. Stretch out your legs a bit, toes point, ankles pump. So point and flex toes. Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Ankles, miracles. Okay, relax. 
Um, bring your feet down to the earth, please. Feel your low back as you go through this process. So we have the back a little rounded as the knees are in, and then maybe do one at a time just to minimize that disruption. Um, hands to your low belly. Just feel that space. Loving awareness for what is. These miracles. Entire humans that have come from some of these inner spaces. Integrated, complete, perfect human being. Please bring your arms by your sides now. Feel the earth with your hands. Feel what's underneath your hands, your mat, your, your floor. And press up into bridge pose. So I always have to move my head away a bit to make room. So allow yourself that space that you need it so you can, wow, feel the fronts of your legs lengthen out here around the pelvis. This is the opposite of sitting pose. Five deep breaths, rest into it. And the breath is more slow than anything. Gentle sound through the nose. Just the right amount, sustainable bridge. One more time, maybe a little bit more lift, just a little more ease now that we've been here a little while. Enjoy the process of coming down. Try to slow it down. Bring your spine back down to the earth. Feel it. Feel each space come down, each bone and that release as you land your sacrum and knees and hands together, knees over sacrum, circle to the right or the left will do both ways. Just gently massaging that, that dense bone into the earth. Keep it really light, go the other way. Building awareness. And the second chakra. Our watery nature, our creativity. Stillness with that in mind and a transition to seated, rocking up or over to one side. Hold your shins, bring your knees in. So that helps load up your physics to go forward. Propel yourself forward, rock up and sit. Tuck into your easy pose. Pause with the energy. It is so nice to take a moment. Feel that you have generated this state. The energy of your body, all these layers. Let's do our seated twist over to the right side. Remember to let your belly be relaxed as you rotate your spine. Looking back, side to eyes. Slow breathing, determined to move freely through the body. Next time you breathe out, let that feel complete. Let go nice and easy. Back to center and over to the other side. Guide your way in. Refine and then hold steady. So there are ways that we can settle our consciousness it is by giving ourselves something to focus on. And here we use the breath as that bridge. There's the body awareness too. It gives the brain a place to rest. One more time, let your breath feel complete. Exhale, feel it start to transition to inhale. Come on back to center, please. And let's practice a malasana, a garland pose. Let's start with seated and have an opportunity to come up onto the feet if you would like. So holding shins, knees wide, lengthen forward until you feel length that travels down from your head, neck, and spine to your seat. 
Breathe into that space between the pelvis and the ribs and the back of your body. See if you can even sense where that is. And then close your eyes for that internal looking kidneys, adrenals, and strong muscles. Ease it back up. Repeat. You can do the, the reach through or palms press or the balance if you like to try. Careful with your hands. Don't abuse your thumbs. So play. Kind of a consolidated form, five breaths. It's okay if your heels don't come down. No harming. Try to be steady wherever you are. Breathe again. And from here, let's transition to standing. So you can close your knees and rise up. Take your time. Step your feet a little bit apart and come to Uttanasana forward fold. Bring your hands naturally reach. Let them rest there. Head down, chin tucking. Trying to create some space between the bones in the spine. Inhale as if you were going to come up. Exhale, fold forward one more time, breathing out. Sometimes I say breath in twice. Standing. Okay, body, stand up. Press your feet. Use the strength of your legs. Extend your spine, rise. Continue up with a reach. Draw the low belly underneath you and breathe out. Bring down your arms. Elbows up, palms press, float the hands. Settle the feet into mountain and activate the upper back and chest in pranavasana. Axial extension of the spine, so long through the top of the head, tall spine, neutral. Do all the poses. Try to have a neutral attitude. And release. Okay, stepping back to the high lunge, sometimes called crescent. So top third of the mat, concentration. I study and a, a sense of readiness. If you're already back, that's cool. Go on back as you're ready. Big step. Find your balance on the ball of your foot. Knee over ankle and your own depth is fine. Keep your tall spine. If you would like, bring your arms, your hands apart and come up until it feels like a good position for your arms and shoulders. You don't have to go all the way up unless you feel comfortable there. Sorry, that was a lot of talking. This is not an easy pose. Good, I see it in there though. Okay, the coming forward, coming out, bring down your arms. Lean forward, arms sling back, press your back foot and release. Try the second side, concentration. Standing leg ready to do a little balance. You can actually work your toes back into the shape or step to warrior A and then pivot. Come on down, take a little time to find the right depth. Arms down, slowly up until it feels good in your body. Letting yourself find the way that it feels, not the way you think it needs to look. Be the guide. Three, shoulders down, gaze steady. Knee steady, four. And five, bring down your arms, lean forward, arms keep going back, and then press your foot, release. Let's try to get the physics of the release. Right leg up, kick out. Left leg up, kick out. And mountain pose, so. Feel the prana increase, the vital energy. Those are intentional, part of those practices we just did. Keeping the summer energy strong. Let's carry on with our standing practice. Bend your knees deeply. Come over to the left side. Might as well mix it up. New week. 
and step your feet about a leg's length apart from each other, your feet. Looking down, triangle pose. Bring your left leg towards the front of your mat. Hand to the low belly. As you come over, just to remember to use your core strength to work from this place. If it feels good, reach your arm to the air or dive it behind your waist. Just wrap it behind you if you'd like and let your heart be open. Gaze down your nose or up towards the ceiling. The nose gaze always a choice. One more deep breath. If your arms behind you, bring it up and out and then come up. Turning the other side, meditation to the second side. Remember to angle your back heel to your own liking and the hands below belly coming over and down. Slide your other hand down your leg until it's at a place that feels positive for your body. And if you want to take that hand away from the belly to the sky, opening the shoulder or rolling the shoulder in, come behind your back. Bye, guys. Remember to take away any excess effort once you find your pose. And as we breathe one more time, release your arm from behind you, reach it up. Navel towards the spine, really focus on that and the sense of strengthening the low back as you come slowly out. So we don't want to pull ourselves out too quickly, but let that create strength. Back to the first side, please, and work your feet a little wider. More your B, settle down the center. So we're facing the side with our pelvis and our chest and our shoulders. So the arms reach front and back or side to side. And then turning your head forward, shoulders down. Do you tend to round and collapse in this pose? Open it out a little bit. Do you tend to throw yourself back in this pose? Bring it down, center it. It might be hard to see in yourself, but just try to be aware of that. Deep breath again. Exhale, release your arms. Find the second side. Refinements, check your tendencies and breathe deeply. Meditative eyes and breath. Exhale, arms down. Press your foot, release, dive to the first side. Reverse warrior. Grounding your hand on the back leg and the other arm up and back. Gaze down your nose. Work where it feels good in your body. Just one more breath and we'll go into extended side angle. Try to just exhale right into the shape. Know yourself, know where you're working. On the leg or on the floor block. Love the connection, this whole top line of the body right now, that longest finger to the back edge of your foot. One more breath. So feel the low back in the middle of all of that. Come out with a little slowness and lots of awareness. So those two shapes to the back of the mat, come to your warrior B lunge, add the reverse warrior. Do you need some tail tuck energy here? How's it going in the back of the body? Gaze down your nose. Keeping space in the neck. Exhale, complete. Up, inhale. Exhale again, extended side angle. Take another breath or two to get in there if you need to. Again, finding that top line of the body energy, that, how it's all connected. Breathe again. Follow, inhale, slowly come up and out. 
turn to wide, parallel feet, and step your feet closer together, coming out, cross and heel. Anatomical neutral is like mountain with your palms facing forward a little bit. Then to the front of your mat, please. For um, Parasvottanasana, arms behind the back. Know yourself here. Start where you start. Come up your spine if you can, and then step your left leg back. Straight leg stance. Enough space. You're not in a balance beat. You've got space between your feet both ways. Breathe in. Breathe out, bringing this shape into a forward fold. Your front knee can bend. Look to your big toe. Check in, long neck, elbows lifting. Maybe carry on with the forwardness. Stop at any point. At the end, tuck your chin. Exhale, Parsvottanasana. Inhale. Come up, change your arms only if you need to as you step back to the other side. So learn to work with yourself here, just that right place. Long spine, elbows stay lifted as you head out. Look for the big toe, hello. Exhale again, maybe more forwardness. Chin towards the shin. More like forehead, sorry. So grounding, one more breath, receive all the benefits and come up with care. Let your arms release down and away and allow your wrists some movement from that position. Hands together. So if you bring your hands lower, you will stretch the wrists one way, find it. Nice place. Come back to center and bring the backs of your hands together. And then come up until you feel a little stretch in your wrists. Come out and just release open a moment. Let the energy flow. Sun salutation, inhale. Exhale to the forward fold position. Inhale to the halfway lift. Don't look up, just lengthen through the top of your head. Exhale, step the right leg back. Bring down the back knee. You may stay with your hands low or come up. Reset the foundation if needed for the, I think of this one as the crescent lunge, on Asana. Face down your nose. The spine in extension, care with the low back. Let's build awareness back there with hand contact, fingers down. Feel your sacrum, rest your hands back there. Breathe out one more time. Release to neutral, hands down, spreading, bring back your leg. Cow spine, inhale. Cat spine, exhale. Carry on. Meditate. Taking care not to overdo and do a toe tucking with mindfulness, come to puppy pose. So let's do sink hips towards heels to any degree, stretching feet, be careful. Bring your forehead down, turn your palms up, just roll your thumbs out and rest your shoulders. What's touching the ground right now? 
It's kind of a balance with the pose without the hands. We using the back of the hands a little more. And then flip the hands back over. Ease up and forward to upward facing dog carefully, please. Set your hands bending outwards. Um, you can lift your feet up into the air if you would like. It brings you in a different place on the knees as you come forward, it brings you above your knees or bring down your feet and use them to help you settle in. Gaze down, just the right amount. Don't force your body here. Determine pressing with your hands. Super aware in the pelvis, tucking under the tail energy as needed, little tone in the tummy, and carefully come out and back to child's pose. Arms resting in some way. Exhale completes. Coming up, bring your right leg forward for the crescent lunge on the second side on Johnny Yasmin. Guiding your knee and your pelvis forward to your own degree. If you need a reset where your back knee is, you may do so. Feed back on the back of the body. Gently open heart. Gaze out. Give us all your attention to find steadiness in this depth and then press to come out. Transition to standing forward fold. Release your breath. To protect your back as you come up, use your strength of your legs. Hands find the uh, crest of the pelvis. So your long axial extension here and then press your feet and lengthen up. Let's go down and try it again. So stay down, it's like a chair pose. Long spine, legs, strengthen. One more. Standing with mindfulness. Mountain. Standing side bend with the crossover optional. Left foot in front of the right. Bring it on over, your, your own favorite. You can do the wrist tractioning one or the side rounding. A little tone in the low belly in side poses and especially when coming out, just have awareness. Release, release, pause. Other side. Balance challenge with the crossover. Go for the brain. Awareness of core as you come into your side. Stretch of choice. So you need a little energy of tail tucking as well. Maybe some engagement of mula bandha. A little uplift in the pelvic floor. Where can you find stability? Come on down with gentleness and awareness. And release your feet. Step, up, step your feet a little bit wide with the toes out somewhat. Standing back then. So we're learning to map the back of our body with our hands. Work with your proportions. Sacrum, triangular shape, back of pelvis, fingers down. Easy wide stance. So we're going to first lengthen, breathe in, reach to the top of your head. Exhale, pelvis forward, lift your ribs, gaze down. So you can do a little bit of back bend or a little more. It's, it's a little strong, it's very chronic. Just do the right amount. And then coming out, bring your head last. So pelvis, head last. And go in the opposite direction, feet hip distance. You sit slowly, just like we, we come up, you can bend your knees to come down and then explore the straightening Uttanasana. Favorite form. 
standing on the hands if you would like, or catch your elbows. With preparation, inhale here, get your low belly hollowed out, your spine long. Exhale, release your head down and towards your legs. Five breaths. It's really however many breaths you do in about that time. One more opportunity for one more. And release your hands to the earth and your legs back to plank pose. Where are you going to work today? Know yourself coming in. You do this every day, you just come right in. Hips can be high, knees can be down. Press the earth, five breaths. Press till you feel these muscles at the front of your shoulder, your pectoral muscles starting to activate. There's an energy pulling towards the center of the belly as well. Everything going to the center on the front body. One more breath. Not trying to irritate, but it's important to be strong. Knees down, knees down release your toes. Dolphin pose. Hands flat or together. Tuck your toes. Resettle your forearm bones as needed. So you have this little triangle. Make sure your hands can come out to your elbows for a moment and then back together just to have that measurement. Head down, lift your knees. Five breaths. Externally wrap the shoulders around towards the heart in the front of the body. Total uplift in the low belly. A great place to work on it. There's four, one more time. Transitioning out to the belly through the forearm plank. Walk your feet back, maybe come to your knees as you unfurl yourself, bring your head over your hands. Again, pull elbows and toes towards your belly. Back of the body lengthens. Three. Active pressing with the, with the arms. And ease your belly down, release your feet. Coming to a reach out on the belly and into a nice, easy sphinx. So start small. We need a little core engagement, a little navel towards the spine. Close your eyes, think about that a moment. You've got a little feedback from the earth underneath your belly. If you can activate even the Mula Bandha as well, the pelvic floor lifting into the body. Maybe a little bit of tail tuck energy. And with that awareness, bring your elbows in as far as under your shoulders, but sustainable and good for your back. Is that too strong? Lifting out of the shoulders, ground the pelvis. Ground the feet. Downward gaze when an extension. Learn to do that whenever you are in a back bending shape. And let that feel complete. Bring your hands out overhead again, one at a time, slowly, slowly. Let's do the roll to the um, right side of the body, supporting head, finding your side laying mountain. Top hand to the low belly with love and awareness. Balance. Side lying dancer pose or half bow with the preparation first. So catching foot, ankle, leg, trousers, strap, bring your heel towards your hip. Mindful of your shoulder, mindful of your knee. Don't overdo. Try to lengthen from the belly of those muscles, the center. Rest. 
Just do what is needed. Breathe out one more time. And now the, the half bow where you press your foot into your hand. Pelvis comes into ex extension, spinal extension happens when you do that. Ground that bottom leg. Breath matches the poses as far as its <clears throat> speed. Let this feel complete, a mindful letting go. This can read over into half frog on this side. So if you need to move, we move. Eight breaths or so, bringing that knee up along the, along the floor beside you. So you're on your belly, you're on the inside of your leg and you may curl your torso towards the bent knee a little bit. And relax, go again. Take away the efforts. Support your head. Make a compassionate choice for it. Total softness. Are you holding tension anywhere? Let it go one more time. Breathe very slowly. And also releasing slowly. We'll give the option for that to be part of our Shavasana practice day. If you would like to have more time there, remember you can do that half frog anytime. Now the second side with side lying. Support head, find your balance. Your bottom knee could bend to give you more stability. I don't know if I've ever said that, so I'm sorry. Then that top knee, bring your heel towards the hip. Reach, minimize the effort. Just try to bend your elbow enough to stretch the front of your leg. We tend to be short here in the front of the hip and from our, our seated lifestyle, gently opening this area. Bring us to a more balanced state. The other um, second one, lying half bow, press split into hand, opening that space behind you. Breaths balance the energy, feel the pranic nature of this pose, and then a release of the leg, bring it back out. Top hand to the earth so you slowly come over to your belly with your knee coming out to the half frog on this side. Settle to your belly, curl if you want to, rest, go still. A little bit longer, making sure I get to everything. Breathe slowly one more time. Give yourself a chance to feel complete. Lift up your head, slowly straighten out your leg. And um, coming back to child's pose. So this is our getting ourselves out of chaturanga to get out of our belly pose. Elbows in, press into the earth, rise up. 
Come back to child's pose to walk in your knees, go back. See how, if you can lengthen your spine in the pose by bringing your, your skull away from your shoulders. Maybe your shoulders away from your hips and your pelvis. A little bit activated by that. One more time. Pulling yourself up to tabletop. Pull. Feel how it turns into a press once you're up. Wide knees, threaded, threading needle pose. So option to do it as the wide child's pose thread needle. Come on in if you know what you wanna do or tabletop thread needle. So I feel I feel really congested when I'm back in child's pose here. So just work with yourself and come on through. Neck is long here, so you're on the on the skull above your ear somewhere. Ground into the earth. Find a little uplift in your low belly. Settled in. So now resting that arm into the ground wherever you can press it for stability, the back side of the arm. Use your top hand if you'd like to roll towards the back of your skull a little bit, really listen to your body. Big toes together, helps you find yourself in space here. You're all upside down and twisted. Breathe again. Start the releasing. Just one thing at a time, observe. Open out, breathe in and release. Other side, if you need to reset your knees, do so. Make your choice. Come on through as you're ready. Go ahead and ground that hand and arm, whatever touches as you bring down your head. Big toes come together around the tops of your feet. So find the foundation, breathe three times. Focusing on that. This is good for hip stability. That's if your feet feel ungrounded, that's where that needs to come from. Breathe one more time. And then now the option, you can stay as you are or roll towards the back of your skull a little bit, pressing your hand. Very mindfully. One more breath with a new perspective on the world and the process of coming out being noticed. Downward facing dog to complete this part of our practice. Five breaths. Inhale two more times. Exhale. Inhale, feel it flow from one to the other. And the exhale, coming to lie down. Bring with you any supports that you would like for rest or could be anything else. It's okay to drink a small amount during practice. Take care of yourself. That's what you're here for. We'll do the line figure four and the line twist and then a little rest. So you know what to expect. My young knees to chest. Remember where we started with this rock. Figure four, come on in if you know the pose. Then you get more time to work on it. But do so with mindfulness every time. There's some brightness that needs to happen in that crossing over leg, just in case anyone ever watches this that's never done it before. <laughs> um, this is like a lying down pigeon pose, working that shin parallel to the front of the mat position. Bring it in if it feels good, both legs. If this is another threading needle that you can do. 
super respectful. Make sure your head is centered and neck is long, energy flowing through. If your head lifts up when you hold on, it's just try to tuck your chin and keep it relaxed. Ease your head back to the earth. If earth if it was lifted, bring your legs down and out. Other side. Checking in, rest that ankle above the knee. Rest your knee away from your chest and keep it a little activated. Come on in, drag the needle if you would like. You can bring your leg in slightly closer to find that, try to find that sweet spot where you're stretching outer hip but not putting too much pressure on your hip joint. Totally custom for your body. Feel the breath slowing down, resting into the earth one more time. Letting your head come down gently if it was lifted, uncross. And a few windshield wipers turning out your toes and your knees. And bring your arms out by your side. Just go side to side. Move your hips through their rotations. And knowing yourself, what's your favorite lying down twist? What's going to feel most therapeutic today? Next time you come over to the right side, go ahead and let your legs settle into that place. The two knees stacking one brings the pelvis over and neutralizes the low back by changing the position of the knee up or down, changes where it affects the back of the body. So find one that feels really positive today and then let your head roll the other way to complete the rotation. No forcing. If you're... <laughs> Initial decision wasn't exactly right. Refine it and then rest into it. Belly breathing, letting go of the fondness. Let that softness in the front of the body help your back body soften. Let's move over to the other side with slowness. Do not disturb your body or your mind excessively. Take, take the time to settle into this side where it is most therapeutic for you. Create a little space between your knees with a cushion or you can use your feet creatively for such. Rest. Freedom in the belly. Last one, let the exhale settle down into the body. Gently reactivating your core to come back to center. Find center on the back of your body and um, bring your knees up. Reach through like malasana to catch your ankles and widen out your knees to the side. So a little strength in the arms here to do your bound angle pose. Letting the in, in seams lengthen. Take away any excess effort. Nice and warm, work as deeply as it feels positive here. Letting those legs rotate out. 
And one at a time, bring foot to the earth and stretch out, Shavasana. Or if you'd like to do your belly um, and half frog pose, I will give you a halfway point. So lying down, rest in some way. This is the, the chance for us to be with the energy of the practice, to be in that bliss, this self-generated, so much wisdom. Let go of any efforts in the body in this ultimate yin position, Shavasana. Let go of the muscular effort. You might observe that your breathing will carry on and that's good. Let it, let it do what it wants right now. It is still there supporting you, whether you want to organize it or not. But try to let go of organizing. Just be with it. Attention to how you're resting your jaw. Where's your tongue? It's fine to allow a little separateness between the lips. If you've been in the half frog pose and want to change sides, or if you need to resettle anything, make a new commitment to stillness. I am hardly an ornithologist. Nevertheless, I live among the birds and on the best days, my mind is with them, partaking of their nature, which is earthly and airy. I live with the heavenly swallows who fly for joy to live, yes, but also for joy as they pass again and again over the river, feeding, drinking, bathing joyfully as they fly. Sometimes my thoughts are up there with the yellow-throated warbler high among the white branches and gray-green foliage of the sycamores, singing as he feeds among the lights and shadows. A ringing in my ears from hearing too many of the wrong things surrounds my head some days like a helmet. And yet I hear the birds singing, the song sparrow by the water, the mockingbird, whose song so beautiful flings him into the air. Song comes from source unseen, as if from a stirring leaf, but I know the note before I see the bird. It is a Carolina wren whose good cheer never falters all year long. Into the heat, into the smells of horse sweat, man sweat, molting, foliage, stirred earth, and the song of the wood thrush flows cool from the dark woods. I hear the sounds of wings. What man can abide the rule of the market when he hears in his waking, in his sleep, the sound of wings? At night, I hear the owls trilling near and far. It is my dream that calls, my dream that answers. Sometimes I sit as quiet on my porch above the river. A warbler will present himself. Per perilla or yellow-throated prone 
Kona, Kona notary. Perfect beauty in finest detail, seeming as unsure of me as I am of him. Or one never knows quite when the wax wings suddenly disappear, numerous and quiet, not there it seems, until one looks as though called forth like angels by one's willingness for them to be. Or it has come to be September and the blackbirds are flocking. They pass through the riverbank trees in one direction erratically like leaves in the wind. Or it is June, the martins are nesting. The he bird has the fiercest countenance I've ever seen. He drops out of the sky as a stone falls and then he breaks his fall and a light's light on the housetop as though gravity were not. Think of it to fly by mere gift without the clamor and stain of our inert metal in perfect trust. It is the Sabbath of birds that so moves me. They belong in their ever returning song and their flight and their faith in the upholding air and to the original world. They are above us and yet of us for those who fly fall like those who walk. Letting rest feel complete. Use your mindfulness energy to release your body, moving things, moving breath. Return to your easy seat or your lotus seat and come together to say, Thank you for everything. Grateful hearts for this beautiful tradition. This opportunity to come together, share yoga. Oh. Thank you. Proto notary. Proto notary, right, Joanne? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Joanne taught me to say that word. It's it's prothonotary. 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 A little white warbler. I mean a little yellow warbler, sorry. Um, I know it's it's a little long, but it was so perfect for today, I thought. Who wrote the that? Platonic, 